Today's speaker has distinguished himself as a student in the classroom, as co-editor of The Little Hoya for three years, as an actor on stage with the prep players, and as a student rector of Kairos 57. Teachers tell me that when they are grading a pile of papers and they come to Joey's, they breathe a sigh of relief. They know it will be excellent. For Joy, it's extremely articulate in both the written and spoken word. More than that, Joy embodies the gifts of a generous spirit. When I ask some of Joy's fellow students and teachers to use words to best describe him, the word to which they most often gravitated was nice, or one of his variants. He is the nicest guy, a junior observed. So friendly, funny, kind, and easy to talk to. Whenever I see him observe one of his senior classmates, he always has a smile on his face. He brightens the room by simply being there. Joy's adult leader on the New Orleans service trip marveled at his empathy with the people of the Ninth Ward on whose homes he worked, and also at the depth of his reflections about the connection between his Kairos experience and his service trip. Joey's gut-wrenching performance as the elderly, desperately lonely farmhand Candy and of Mice of Men testified eloquently to the deep sensitivity that, that is such an integral part of his makeup. Whether helping a buddy struggling in class, or a fellow actor trying to learn lines, or the new editors of the newspaper attempting to master the necessary software, or a junior on Kairos in need of encouragement and a sympathetic ear. Joy has been there for others. He has helped me up when everything seemed to bring me down, said one of his classmates. He has also pulled me back when I was about to go too far. Pretty high praise. Father Marco, trustees, parents and guests, Graduates of the class of 2011, it is my great honor and privilege to present to you this year's commencement speaker, Joy Dennis Allaire. Before I begin, a quick disclaimer. If at any point uh, my face begins to turn bright red, do not be alarmed. Anyone who knows me at all will tell you this is normal for me. <laughs> Thank you to Father Marco, Headmaster Jones, Ms. Frazier, all of our faculty and staff, and all of our family and friends for sharing this morning with us. And congratulations to all 116 of my classmates. We did it. I am profoundly honored to have been chosen to deliver this commencement address. But as we gather for the very last time as the Georgetown Prep class of 2011 to recall the shared experiences, to celebrate our accomplishments, and to consider how our four years here will impact our lives, I find myself challenged beyond my humble capabilities. I am too new in the world outside of Georgetown Prep to truly capture the implications of our prep experience. So, let me take you to a better vantage point, a few years into our futures where the true meaning of our time at prep has become more apparent to us. Through Ignatius's examined prayer, we realize how much clearer God's presence is in the events of our days by looking back on it. Miss Collins often calls this looking for God in the rear view mirror. In the very same way, it is so much easier to realize the great importance of our time at prep by looking backwards. Now, join me in the future at the class of 2011's 10-year reunion and allow me to share with you my reflections on Georgetown Prep and our graduating class as I arrive back on campus a decade later. The year is 2021, and I catch my first glimpse of Georgetown Prep from Rockville Pike. A spray-painted sheet is draped over the entrance gates 
proclaiming Prep Lacrosse's recent victory over Landon. I guess some things never change. <laughs> I used to visit campus on all my breaks from college, but it's been a long time since I've been back now. But it seems like just yesterday, I received a standing ovation after giving what went into the books as one of the greatest commencement addresses ever given. I can see the steeple of the Chapel of Our Lady peeking out through the treetops. My mind returns to the hot afternoon of July 7, 2010. The small chapel was more overcrowded than I have ever seen it before. Miss Bonnie Haynes was standing behind the podium, reading her eulogy for her husband, Mr. Rich Drozd, a much beloved member of the Prep family who passed away just a few weeks after the end of our junior year. She spoke beautifully, saying, I've been thinking about the threads that tie two lives into one. There were big things that we shared and that brought us closer. But the little things are what keep coming back to me. A multitude of little things. As I begin to look around the old campus in 2021, Ms. Haynes' words from 10 years ago echo in my mind. The little things. There had been big events that had brought us together as a class and as a school, one of them being Father George's departure last year and Father Marco's arrival for our senior year. But it had really been the little moments and the small happenings that weaved all 117 of us into one. I drive onto campus past the security guard at his usual ready stance. <laughs> I know as a visitor I am still technically required to park in the back lot. But hey, I'm an alumnus now. I swing into the forbidden teacher's parking lot, <laughs> living dangerously. When I was at prep 10 years ago, I remember walking past Mr. Smith's sexy convertible and Dr. Ballback's bicycle. <laughs> Today, I notice one other familiar car. I can't think of whose it is until a tiny man whose head is hidden behind a stack of textbooks and papers pops out. Dr. Oaks. I suddenly remember the spring Sunday classes, especially the one the day after prom, and the loathsome all of the following are true except tests. But I also remember the kindness and genuine interest he showed me on so many occasions. This sincerity was so typical of prep teachers. I thought back on the many times I had come to teachers like Dr. Benangelino, Miss Lane, Father Sauter, Mr. Barry, and so many others to simply chat about my day or to discuss an issue in my life or theirs. I remember Dr. Watson asking me to his office to discuss each step of my college process making sure I was thinking about what I wanted from the next four years of my life. He was genuinely concerned that I would choose the school that would help me achieve those goals. Prep teachers' commitment and ability to deeply relate to and understand their students added so much to every moment in and out of class. Friends in college had raved about the accessibility and caring of their professors compared to their high school experiences. But for me, prep teachers had always been good, good, and good. <laughs> On my future visit, I stroll into the quad and I take a seat beside the statue of St. Ignatius. I sat on these same benches during my Ignatian meditations, learning to find God in all things. I can picture this campus in all four seasons and realize how blessed we have been to have studied on one of the most beautiful high school campuses in the United States. I would have stood over by the doors of Haas, listening to a camo-clad Corey Dobbins and a banana-suited Chris Kearns, proclaim the strength of Prep's football team, and on one occasion, the immense size of Scott Mergner's hands. 
And over by the chapel, I can see the place where they built the gallows for me after the spoof Halloween newspaper fiasco. <laughs> As I walk into the George Center, I remember hearing about the plans to build the Father Michael Marco lacrosse arena in the last alumni news magazine. <laughs> As I walk past the old newspaper office, I notice the sign reads, Senior Lounge. Well, I guess they finally caved. <laughs> A few kids are sitting in the room chatting, and I remember the companionship I found in prep men. So many times, I had sat in that same room with some of the best guys I've ever known. I remember late evenings with Greg Bourdon and Peter Delaney, building an issue of the newspaper, but also building friendships that would last the rest of our lives. And despite Frau Collins' most valiant efforts, I recall the free periods with 35 other people. Continuing my stroll, I passed the 44 official seals of the Jesuit high schools of the United States. And I recall the origin of the Jesuits. When Ignatius founded the order, he did not call it the Society of Jesus. He called it the Company of Jesus. From the beginning, he wanted his friends and students to be companions to one another to walk beside one another, to never be alone in their mission. I think of the friendships that were born in the halls of prep. I can almost see Renee Levine and Dewan Anderson, or Charlie Lulakis and Bobby Rutland coming around the corner from the Hoya Cafe. Ignatius would be proud of the intense and intimate friendships I and all of my classmates have formed here at prep. As I continue to stroll through the building, I happen to notice Mr. Gallagher in the college counseling office talking to a student. Does that ever bring back memories from senior year? I overhear the student say, well, I'm thinking of applying to Yale. And I remember what Mr. Gallagher would have said to most of us. That might be a bit of a reach for you, Joey. <laughs> but today, I overhear his response to the student a response colored by the fact that Mr. Gallagher is now graying at the temples. <laughs> Yale, are you kidding me? Who do you think you are? Joe Giamatorio? <laughs> on my way to visit the theater, I see a prep bus parked on the side of the road. I can't help thinking about the places prep took us, physically and mentally. For me, it was the colorful streets of Buenos Aires, Argentina, and the church halls of Saragossa, Spain. For my classmates, it was Japan, Italy, Taiwan, Brazil, Turkey, and a thousand other places during their time at PrEP. PrEP has opened our eyes to a wider world of cultures, religions, and traditions. Many of my classmates have traveled to Buenos Aires and know exactly what it was like to be immersed in a culture so perfectly foreign. Eating new foods, taking new classes, and speaking, or at least trying to speak, a new language. At the same time, prep teachers have worked hard to ingrain in us a sense that service is an essential part of Christian life. On the night of our final reflection in Louisiana, after working six days among the devastated homes and endlessly thankful people of New Orleans, we came to the realization that we must give back in thanksgiving for all with which we have been blessed. And give back we did, from the jungles of the Dominican Republic to the small Virginia town of Ivanhoe to Tommy Ritchie's project on the Native American reserves of Arizona just to name a few. Now I walk into the theater, a place where I spent a good amount of time when I was at prep. I see the stage is still set from the last production, and I recall all the things that prep had presented to us on that same stage. From our first days as freshmen, listening to Mrs. Fraser and Dean Rodriguez explain their expectations to us, to Tim Dorn's many guest appearances at the freshman dance contests. I remember watching Peter Fanon as Judas in Godspell, and Matteo Moran as George Milton 
in Of Mice and Men. I remember Michael Garrity and Power Pirate bringing their unique musical stylings to the Oasis concerts just before Peter Moran and the Pike Boys took the stage. Walking across the hall into a classroom, I spot a young Jesuit priest. I think of Father McCouch, who moved on from prep at the same time as us. Father McCouch is now skillfully working his way through the Vatican diplomatic corps and is widely believed to be the first Jesuit pope in history. <laughs> but I am reminded of the greatest thing that PrEP has given us. Informing young men, PrEP offered a definition of manhood that is perhaps slightly countercultural. Of course, PrEP encouraged strength in mind, in body, and in faith. But we also learned that a true man embodies love. We found on Kairos that this combination of strength and tenderness sets us apart but also endows us with a responsibility to bring this new manhood to every future encounter. PrEP has molded us into men of competence, conscience, courage, and compassion. So many times I have found my friends to be both unbelievably caring and boldly courageous, people to laugh with and cry with. Charlie Alexander jumps to mind. In a heated football game four years ago against Mount St. Joe's, he was one of the first to forcefully defend his team's honor. While in quieter moments, Charlie is always the first to ask a friend if he needs something after a hard day. Now finally I find myself at the Hanley Center. Before I head into the reunion, I pass the trophy wall remembering the split seconds of sporting glory that have stayed with us even 10 years after graduation. Our send-off for Denny McCarthy as he, sent, as he went off to Scotland for the Junior Ryder Cup. Joel Blockowitz's two pick sixes against Calvert Hall. And Bobby Gribbon's last second overtime goal against Landon. Finally, I enter the room under the reunion sign reading, Welcome back, class of 2011, where I'm greeted by some faces I still see frequently and others I haven't seen in 10 years, but each perfectly familiar. My walk through campus in the future has reminded me of how blessed I have been, how blessed we all have been to be a part of Georgetown Prep. After 10 years, the memories of the multitude of little things still remind us of the big things that PrEP gave us. Miss Haynes ended her eulogy for her husband, Mr. Drozd, that sunny afternoon by saying, my longtime friend commented when I said Rich and I had 25 good years, that 10 more would be nice. Ms. Haynes couldn't help but agree. Ms. Haynes repeated her friend's comment to a neighbor who replied, you're lucky you had 25 good years. Some people never have that. Ms. Haynes declared, I agree with her even more. Even from the vantage point of the present, of a freshly minted prep graduate, I realized clearly that PrEP has given me four years of the greatest moments, greatest ideas, and greatest friendships I have ever experienced. Another year with this class would be nice, but I have to agree with Ms. Haynes. I have been lucky to have you at all. It has been my dream since reading it to bid farewell to my PrEP family with the words, of Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, Ulysses. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper 
of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Graduating today, perhaps we lose something, but we will always share the gifts that PrEP has given us, the deep connection to one another, and the commitment to be men for others. My brothers of PrEP, my friends for life, my class of 2011, the small moments of PrEP have woven our lives together, and I could not wish for greater men to be tied to for life. Congratulations, my friends. Live the fourth. awards were presented to students judged outstanding in that particular subject. They were awarded at a ceremony on Thursday. We ask that the award winners stand to be recognized. Please hold your applause until the last name is read. In the study of art history, Joseph D. Allaire. In his study of Spanish, Joseph D. Allaire. The Thomas A. O'Callaghan Prize for English Composition, Joseph D. Allaire. The Hamilton Medal. The Hamilton Medal founded by Dr. George E. Hamilton is awarded to that member of the senior class who has most distinguished himself by scholastic success and who, by his interest and helpfulness in school activities, has contributed in a marked degree to the life of the students. We proudly present PrEP's oldest medal to its 87th recipient, Joseph Dennis Allaire. and friends of the graduates, members of the faculty and administration, gentlemen of the 18th graduating class in our third century, Georgetown Preparatory School in its 222nd year, the 92nd at Garrett Park in North Bethesda, now concludes the ceremonies of this, our 212th commencement day. <laughs>